Hey everybody, this is uh, Matthew Sutton. I'm uh, going to be doing a uh, another drawing today. Uh, this time it's going to be a mashup, actually, just a fun sketch I did in my my sketchbook. Um, it's Timo and uh, Snake from Metal Gear Solid, or some of you might know him from Super Smash Brothers. He's a really cool character. But anyway, I decided to kind of mash up the two characters um, because. I don't know, those are just two really, like, stealthy... My idea was to kind of just draw something for fun. So I just took the idea of, like, stealth characters and tried to mash up two that I liked a lot. Um, but yeah, Timo is uh, from League of Legends, and he's just, For those who don't know, he's this little... He kind of looks like a little... Like a teddy bear, almost. Um, but he can turn invisible, and he has a blow dart gun thing, and he poisons people. He's super lethal, but it's, it's kind of a cool um, counter because he's, like, also adorable. And so, you know, it's kind of funny. But Snake, on the other hand, from Metal Gear, is, he's like a, you know, super spy, assassin, ninja dude. So, I mean, he's, he's what you see is what you get. And he just, uh, you'll see, he has all the armor and things like that that, that, uh, that, that Timo's going to have is inspired by him. Um, I tried to infuse a little bit of Snake into, like, everything about Timo, um, I took the fun parts of his uniform that I liked a lot, like kind of like the iconic stuff, like the headband. And, um, he has a like a a chest piece belt that kind of goes around. It looks like it could hold like a gun, you know, like a like a, a police like a cop would might might wear or, or a detective or something. But um, anyway, I thought that would be kind of cool to include also, so I did. Um, I'm actually recording this uh, the audio as a like an after thought to, you know, the the drawing, like I've already done the drawing, I'm just kind of narrating back over the top, so this is my first time doing this, um, so we'll see how this goes, but it looks like, uh, what I'm doing right now is around his eyes, I've actually put down, um, I guess we talk about the pencils first, the pencil is, it's just a, a red, uh, like a coal erase pencil, is what it's called, um, I understand it to be, uh, more of an animator's tool than anything, but I just thought I'd try it out, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's C-O-L Erase Pencil. That's how they're spelled in case you ever want to check one out. They're pretty cool. It just, it seems, it works a lot like, um, a red, a red color pencil, I mean, for, for the most part. Um, I mean, I'm not super, you know, well-versed with those things, to be honest, so I don't know all the ins and outs of them. I'm, I'm sure there's more to it than that, but at first use, which this was my very first time using one, uh, it plays like a color pencil. It, it works just like a red color pencil. Um, so I went in and I put um, around the eyes. Timo's eyes are a different color than the rest of his body. Um, there's like a dark brown, I think it is, around them. And then the rest of him is kind of a lighter brown. So I just went ahead and put that in first. It looked like I was using a sham, I think it's chamois, is what it's called. It's like this really cool, uh, it's like, like a light brown like a milk chocolate brown color almost. This looks really cool. It it, it looks uh it looks good against you know if you need like a nice earthy tone. That's a good one. Um, so the the technique that I'm actually doing in this the order in which I'm drawing it is something I've never actually done before. Um that's not really, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but I, I just wanted to try it because other people say that they do it this way, and, I, you know, I've heard a lot of professionals that do it do it this, you know, this particular way, and what, when I say that way, what I mean is pencils, colors, then inks. I usually go the, another way, I usually go pencils, inks, and colors, which is, you know, you know, if you listen to a lot of people, they'll tell you, like, don't do that. Uh, you know, that's, that's not good, you know, um, but if you're careful, um, I haven't had any issues with it, um, the reason I say it's been as bad is because, um, especially with marker work, and Copics, I know, are, are kind of, they're, the pigment in them, that it's sticky, it's like, if you get the stuff on your fingers, it's kind of like having, you know, really watery syrup, or something, it, it, it's, you know, you notice it right away, but the part that kind of sucks is if you take that pigment or that marker and push it through that black ink, 
it will grab onto it and um, it carries it with it for you know a while so you can really just jack up your artwork like instantly and it can be a surprise and I've done it you know I've done it before um, to be honest I've you know I've made that mistake but I don't know it's just something that doesn't happen often so I'm usually really careful about it but um, yeah so uh, it looks like right now I'm using um, a gray for Timo here. I tried to his his costume has got like that tactical sort of nighttime Navy Seal color almost. You know, um, it's very very gray, very tactical, very this works well in the shadows kind of color. So I wanted to put a, like a base tone down of that. Um, yeah, for the most part, just to kind of get it started, I think that helps a lot. If you get um, a project like that, you know, or, or drawing anything, I guess, can seem kind of overwhelming if you try to think of it in like all these, you know, everything at once. So I try to compartmentalize and just break the thing down into pieces um, that I can kind of handle uh, in like a smaller dose, you know. Um, and that seems to that seems to work out pretty well usually. Um, so yeah, um, the technique that I was saying I was using here, I I, don't know, I just wanted to some, try something different. Really, um, it's not like I was like bored or anything, I guess. But I don't know. I had that I had just gotten that um, that cold erase pencil, and um, I had not. I haven't used them for anything at all, so I figured it was kind of a kind of a waste. And I didn't want to put down pencil, you know, regular um, like graphite, and then you know, trusting people go over. I've seen people do like they'll do like a cold erase pencil, then they'll go over it with a regular lead pencil, then they'll go over it with ink, then they'll go over it with a color. You know, I didn't want to do all that, so I figured I'd just try the just try out the cold erase pencil and you know, pass or fail, or whatever on the sketch. It, it didn't really matter. It wasn't like for a project or anything. It was just something I was working on in my uh, in my sketchbook. I think I started drawing this on my lunch break at, at my day job. Um, I do that a lot. I start I start little things like that when I when I get a minute, just you know, doodles and such, um, which is good. I definitely recommend you do that if you if you find that you've got free time at your job or um, you know, like lunch, you know, don't get in trouble or anything, but if you have time where you could do that, I definitely say, you know, even if it's just doodling on a napkin, you know, I've actually done that. I've made some pretty cool looking stuff on napkins before. Um, I usually give them to people, <laughs> but I've got, a, I've got like one, I've got one in particular that I kept for, from years and years and years ago. It's a, it's a Batman sketch I did on a subway napkin. You know, it's like from thousands of years ago. But anyway, point is, even if you don't have, say, a sketchbook handy, you know, or you can't carry one around for whatever reason, or you know, um, just grab a pencil and use whatever's there. You know, just practice. If you want to get better, practice is a must. It took me too long to figure that out. I know it now, so I'm trying to capitalize every minute that I can. So I'm still filling in Timo's uh, his belt. He's got a. I put on him. I put on a bunch of like pouches. You know, just I don't know what he would probably carry, but you know, you can imagine what you might need if you were a spy. You know, some sort of gas or I guess different darts or something for Timo. But I don't know. I like to think about that kind of stuff sometime. It just helps. It helps me to um, create, I guess, a, a bit more interesting character, like composition or design, I suppose. Um, and what I guess I mean by that is, like, if you, when I was going to say draw this Timo, when I was trying to figure out what to put on him, you know, I didn't just want to. Um, I didn't want to put just like random stuff on him because snakes had 
the character Snake that I modeled kind of put his costume on after him has had a lot of different iterations and he's looked a couple different ways and um, I thought it would be the most effective for what I was trying to do and most like iconic I guess is what I'm trying to say I want people to be able to look at this drawing and go oh that's Snake that's Timo as Snake I don't want them to be like oh that's Timo in a SWAT suit or something, you know, that, you know, if they, if they can't tell what it is, then, you know, at least for this particular thing that I was trying to pull off, I would have kind of viewed it as like a fail, you know, if I, if people couldn't look at that and, you know, I'd love it if they could immediately recognize who that is and what he's, you know, kind of dressed as. Um... You can see here, while I'm doing his boot, I'm I'm kind of thinking about <laughs> leaving a highlight, like just leaving the paper showing through a bit for like a, a a white a white spot. But I don't know. I don't really do a whole lot of that. I I, I just definitely tested it out on this because that's just looking even just watching this now. It's weird to me that I left that white those white spaces there. What I would normally do is just fill it in whatever base color I think it needs to be. And then uh, grab a white pen, pen or um, colored pencil, even, or um, you do gouache. Sometimes I don't really do gouache that much, but gouache works too. If you really need something like super duper crazy white, grab yourself some gouache. Gouache is amazing for that stuff, but you know, like I said, rarely do I use that. I usually just go for a gel pen or a color pencil. And uh, I'll just put the white highlight back in there. You know, I just just drop it right in wherever I need it, and that way you don't have to I don't have to try to plan around it or, or think about it too much. Um, but that's like a generic thing, you know. It doesn't that doesn't always work out. You suppose you do want to you want to plan ahead. You want to you want to have an idea where you're going to go with your drawing that can only help you just don't be afraid to not leave that highlight because there are things that make white <laughs> you know you can put that back if you want to it looks like I must have taken a break to get something I'm sure I had to like I probably couldn't find a marker I do that a lot anymore I have, quite, I have, I have a good collection of markers now finally thank god been building them up for a while. For so long, I was just using a few. <laughs> I was using just a few. I had like two. I had the warm and cool set of the Copic markers, which is the markers I'm using. If I didn't say that already, um, and they're just they're just like grays. The warm and cool are just grays. There's like a there's uh, the the warm set is basically just a gray color with a very very light amount of red in it I believe it's red and um, the cool is same concept but with blue and it's super light I mean you, you really can't tell but when you use them individually you can do some really cool stuff with those things I did a lot of I've done a lot of work with those um, those grays they're still I always call them my weapons of choice because, you know, if, if I had to go fight an art battle or something, you know, I would, I could only take, you know, one, one set or, you know, of markers or whatever, I would, I would definitely grab my, I would take my grays before I take the colors. Um, they just, they just do some really crazy stuff if you play them against each other. Like, they can read, like, all these different colors. It really makes no sense. Um, I don't know the science behind why it works, but you know if you you can take a a warm gray marker and a cool gray marker and draw like a ninja turtle, you know, which are you know they're green and you've only got reddish gray and bluish grays. But if you play your cards right, um, like in that that situation, what I'd probably do is use the the gray the warm gray for like the mask like if it was drawn Raphael for instance I'd make his mask um, the warm gray because it has red in it and then since 
the green is kind of I guess like a cooler sort of color I definitely use the blue for that and it's funny how they they will read really they'll read well next to each other you know they read like they're supposed to um, and they make good flesh tones too um, the the warms the warm well either one will make a good flesh tone you can use a you can use anything for a flesh tone but if you just decide early on that that's what you want to do you can definitely do it you just gotta know ahead of time that you want to make your grays everything that's green in that turtle is going to be your grays and everything that's not the turtle is going to be the warm set or something like that and it, it's funny like a little thing like that a little decision like that can really make a difference and, you know it, it totally work I definitely say check it out I'm doing the headband here now um, with the headband what I wanted to try to do is get nice fluid sort of um, like an S shape almost going on to that just because it, it just cause looks good just good movement um, and stuff like that so um, I pick up things as I go uh, go along I mean I'm all I'm self-taught you know I don't, I don't know if you watched the first video but uh, I'm self-taught you know I went to school for like two semesters and I just didn't really make it it was too expensive so I had to drop out but I didn't make it very far and I didn't I wasn't honestly really learning anything in what I did get to stick around for. So I pick things up as I go. Um, I learn from other artists, learn from, uh, I don't know, like life, I guess. That doesn't sound too, like, philosophical, but, like, you know, I, I pick up stuff just from looking at it. Um, you can learn a lot about what looks good from just from look, just from paying attention to the fact that you think something looks good and try to figure out why it looks good. Like to today, I was doing a. Um, I've been doing some concept work for a project, and one of the things, the requirements, and one of the stipulations that I had to fulfill for a character was it was a guy, and the guy it said he has to be handsome. You know, one of my descripting factors it said, he said you know it said X Y Z. The last one said handsome. So I went to draw this character, and I was like, you know, what. What makes what makes for a handsome looking face? What makes a face uh this is a male, you know, so what makes a man's face look good, you know, so I uh I ended up having to kinda of think on that for a while. And um came up with some I came up with something that, you know, I, the the client liked, so um that worked out, but that's the kind of thing you need to you need to pay attention to. Like if you see something out anywhere, if you see a if you find yourself going, oh that's a pretty bird or that's a nice car, take a second to yourself and just say, well why did I just say that? What made that what what made that me say that that bird was pretty or whatever you might have saw flower or you know anything in nature? What what about that appealed to me? Was it the color? Was how it moved? Um, was it the size? Was it the shape of the, you know, the wings or the, something like that? Or even if you, you know, you can apply it to anything, like I said, with the car. What about the car made you like it, you know? Uh, did it look like you could just, you know, take off at any second? Did it have really nice wheels on it, you know? Was it the color? Shape? Interior? What, what was the thing that made you react like that? And, um, this, you know, pay attention to stuff like that will really... I think it can only only help your game as far as um, being able to make something that is pleasing to look at. Um, so anyway, back to Teemo. I am using a gray at this point. Um, you can. What I'm trying to do is just create a shadow, but I didn't feel like doing all that gradient stuff or like building up layers and layers. It's just a sketch, so. Um, if you ever just kind of want to do something a bit quicker than having to get, you know, put a, a dark brown over the lighter brown and then blend it together and wait and then, you know, all that, eh, just hit it with a neutral gray. You'll be all right. It just, uh, it just speeds up stuff. Um, do, you know, save all that extra, 
really long time consuming stuff save that for your your big projects you know if you're trying to save time and just sketch for fun I don't know I tend to cut corners where possible without sacrificing the the picture itself but uh, that's a good one so I'm going through on here and I'm adding gray to any place where there's going to be a, a darker shadow um, I think at this point I was pretty sure that I was only going to use uh, this gray up to this point I think was going to be the darkest thing on the page um, I think I changed my mind later on but um, I find it I find it useful to keep in mind sometime that when you draw something you are making your own rules you know within the confines of that piece of paper you set the rules you pick what what is what you know um, like for instance uh, you know let's say you're drawing a person you can make on that paper you can make that person yellow make them green you can make them pink purple whatever you want um, you just need to be consistent in that selection and it becomes believable I know I've seen a lot of comic pages where you know whatever is going on maybe it's a dream or maybe um, something really bright is in the room or um, you know maybe characters are visiting other dimensions or other worlds or something and everything is one weird color you know it might be something completely off the wall that you're just like you know you never see in real life but because the people making that book understand or make whoever drew that page or colored it or whatever understand that they they have this the ability to tell you what is okay what is right you know, um, you can set, you can make whatever color you want, and in that way, what I was thinking, kind of go back to my original point, was that I was going to make that gray my black. That was going to be the darkest thing on the whole page. There would not be anything darker than that. And um, this probably sounds really simple, or at least I feel like it sounds simple, but it took me a long time to realize that. <laughs> it took me a long time to figure that out. That that I could dictate what was black what was white what were the, the the maximum brightness what was the maximum darkness of things in the world of th that particular drawing I hope that makes sense <laughs> it might not but trust me if you keep it in mind and kind of test it out I think I think it'll make more sense if you just try it Sorry, I had my hand all in front of the camera just then. Couldn't see anything. But you see how this is uh this piece is kind of going right now where there is no edge to things, I guess. That's kind of the what what appealed to me about the concept of doing this drawing in this fashion where there would be no black lines on it. Um there's no black lines in real life obviously and uh, there's no I guess there's no assassin teddy bear yordles either but you know <laughs> um, it, it just I don't know it adds something a little bit more believable a little bit more graphically interesting when you can do stuff with no lines on it that's something that I have kind of a hard time with right now because I'm so used to doing comic book artwork and everything's got a black line around it. It just makes it easy for the viewer to know where things start and stop. But <clears throat> it's just a different skill, and I haven't, I have not honestly cultivated that particular skill like I probably should have. But I understand the concept of it. I'll work on it as I go. It's always something to improve on, which is good. It can be daunting, but it's it's a good thing. You just gotta understand that as long as you keep moving, as long as you keep practicing, you know you're gonna get better. I tell myself that all the time.
I had originally used um, <clears throat> that light brown color. I think it was that chamois again, I th think, on his nose. And um, it, it's not, I don't know, graphically it didn't stand out enough to me. Like you can see right now, I'm outlining his eyes. I wasn't going to do that at first. Um, but they just, they weren't, there's no delineation. And that's me kind of wanting to go back to putting black lines around things. Which, you know, for sketches like this, for fun little things like this, I might, I might try it out some more where I don't use that. I won't use black lines. I'll just hide my black pens or something and put them away and not worry about it. But it's difficult. It's difficult to go from one way of doing something to a totally different way. Um, or just on a kind of on a whim. I'm glad I did it though. Yeah, I'm definitely fishing for a, another marker. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that. I'm still learning how to do these videos, you know, um, better and, and everything. It's my second one, I think. Um, but they'll improve as I go. Just something else I gotta, I gotta keep plugging away at. I was trying to think of things earlier to, to speak about <clears throat> on this on this recording and um, I kinda was thinking about things like that I used to wonder about more than I do now or things that maybe I've, I've learned um, like uh, for a long time <clears throat> I did not use I just refused to use any sort of reference for for drawing um, growing up, I did not have access to, from, well, at least for most of my life, did not have access to a computer or to the internet or things like that regularly. Um, like, you know, I didn't have one at home or anything like that. So when I wanted to draw something, I either made it up or I'd have to, um, wait until I, you know, I saw it in a magazine or something and, you know, even then I would I would get the magazine out and I would put the thing side by side with my paper, like the book side by side with my paper, and I would draw from whatever the thing was I was looking at. I didn't trace it. I've never been into tracing. I don't really I I don't really I guess advocate tracing. You know, I don't think that's gonna teach anything to a person, you know. Maybe it will. I don't know. I'm I'm self taught, like I said, I'm not you don't have to listen to me, but <laughs> but this is just everything I do is kind of how I figured it out, and you know I know I when I grew when I was growing up drawing I I did not trace things I just refused to do it even as a kid I just it's boring you know I, I I've always felt like it was not even fun because the th the thing that you were working on had already been drawn you know so but what I do recommend what I think is really helpful is instead of you know tracing it like putting your paper over the book and tracing it put your paper to the side of it look at the thing draw it on your paper look at it again draw on your paper <clears throat> that is super helpful I feel like I, I've always thought that was really useful um, because you do that enough you do that enough times and eventually you'll be at a point where you're gonna you're gonna kinda develop the ability to fill in the gaps like you're gonna draw that picture of Batman you know you're gonna copy it off that book 10,000 times or, or something or 100 times even or whatever and every time you do by just looking at it and drawing it looking at it drawing it you, you it's like you collect a little piece of that that artwork in your brain you, you learn where Batman's uh, cape starts on his chest for instance, you learn what the edge of his mask looks like at the nose piece. Does it come to a point? Is it rounded? You know, well, you, you mean you find things like that out, and it's the little nuances like that that you need 
in order to um, invent, you know, to, in order to kind of free yourself from reference, I guess. Um, now, that being said, I definitely use reference now. Um, I, you know, like I said, I used to really be, you know, anti looking at stuff and, you know, didn't, like I said, didn't trace things or whatever. But as a professional artist now, you, I mean, I highly recommend if you don't use reference, um, start learning to use reference because there's stuff in the world that you just have no clue what it looks like and it's, it's not going to help you. Uh, if you have a deadline or something, it's not going to help you to sit there trying to guess. Um, so, yeah. I'm filling in that box now uh, in the background. Uh, snake, the, the that character, Solid Snake, he can he can hide. There's this weird mechanic in the original games for, for anybody who hasn't played, you know, played him, and I haven't played since, like, for a while, but um, he could he could hide in a box. It's kind of funny. You could hide from enemies by getting in this. It's so literally getting in a shipping box, and they would walk past you. If, you know, if they were searching for you, they'd, they'd walk right by you sometime. And it's just like a hilarious mechanic. And since Timo uh, Timo can turn invisible, um, so I actually thought it'd be kind of cool as if you know maybe if they put it in the game or something. Instead of him just turning invisible, he would just get in his box and you know still turn invisible. But it'd be a fun little add-on to the to the character's uh, animation. I don't know if you saw that, but I made the box too short. I um, I just kind of fudged it a little bit with my marker and just added a couple more millimeters and you know a little bit more of an angle to to get that to get that to line up. No matter who you are, you know, professional or not, um, you're gonna mess up. You're gonna make little mistakes like that. Uh, and as I was, when I was younger, trying to become better at at drawing, not that I'm perfect now, but I, uh, I'm far removed from where I used to be. But one of the big things I wish I could kind of go back in time and tell myself, save me a lot of frustration, is mm, you're gonna mess up. You know, mess ups are gonna come. You're gonna slip. You're gonna drop your marker on your page. You're gonna splatter ink. You're gonna bend the page by accident while you're erasing too hard. Um, stuff is gonna occur. And um, like so many of the you know the artists that I admire, you know, that are at the top of their game, even they know, and they'll tell you if you ask them at a convention or something. You know, you're the the truly skilled artist is the guy or girl that can take a a mess up like that and flip it around and make it into something awesome. You know, things are not gonna always go well. You're gonna slip. That ink is gonna bleed. Something something's gonna happen, and you cannot panic. You can't give up. You can't ball up your page and throw it away and start over. Um. At least not on you know a deadline or you know when things are on the line you can't you don't have that kind of time usually so you got to learn to fix it fix it up hide it cover it up and keep moving work it into your piece basically you know make it a piece, make it a part of the composition um, something like that uh, I switched out to my uh, my brush pen at that point. That's a, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that's a Pentel br uh, pocket brush pen. It's uh, it's really cool. It's like a, it, it's kind of like a calligraphy pen. It's just uh, some synthetic fibers that come to a nice little point, and uh, it's got a it's got ink in there, like some type of like India ink or something. It's good ink. It dries pretty fast. But uh, the cool thing about that pen is that you can push really, really lightly. I don't know if you guys can see it, but you can make really small little lines. Or if you push a little bit more aggressively, you can, you know, it'll flatten out the brush on the end, and it makes a nice fat line. And uh, it's it is hard to use. 
don't let me, uh, I don't want to lie to you and tell you that, uh, you know, oh, I'm good at it, or it's easy, you know, no, it's, it's, hor it's horrible, trying to learn how to use that thing, I love it, it's great, but when you first start learning to use it, expect to be upset a few times, um, you definitely want to test drive it on some, you know, artwork that maybe you don't care as much about, or doodle or something, doodle with it, or just, you know, play around, but um, it just takes a really precise sort of touch because any undue pressure will make a fatter line. I guess I never realized until I got started using that pen um, that you really need a steady hand to make those things work really well for you. find speed is a factor too <clears throat> being being quick um, for larger areas is is like a key because if you go slow it, your 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 body at yeah, this has just has more time your muscles has have more time to to kind of shake you know and that's not you don't want that with that pin because it shows everything whether you do a really good job and make a nice smooth line it accentuates it. If you go super slow, make a wiggly line, it accentuates it. So it's it can be your best friend or a horrible, horrible enemy, <laughs> depending on what you do. It's always a little nerve wracking when you gotta when I have to fill in someone's eyes like that because that's not a whole lot of hiding that if you if you botch that but also you know too I find that if you save things like that those really difficult points save that for towards the end of the drawing when you're nice and warmed up, you're sharp, your mind is together. Um, I, th I think that can be, I think that can be kind of a little trick or a, a tip that kind of helps. Is once you've been drawing for half hour, forty minutes, an hour, or whatever it might be, you're you're much more in tune. It's like your brain is more on and ready to do what you. Uh, do what you ask it to. You can see there I'm not touching the page with the pen, but I'm, I'm kind of emoting the line I want to make. I do that kind of a lot, I feel like. Uh, something I've been doing since I was younger. It's like taking a practice swing before you step up to bat, you know. <coughs> There's a lot of little mechanical things like that that I've developed over time. Because I've seen, you know, I, I had not seen other people, I guess, do that specific thing. But there are certain things that I've I noticed that I've picked up from watching other artists do stuff. But you'll, you'll find that, too, as you draw more, you'll develop um, habits uh, like that. And you got to be careful to make sure that they're good habits, because... You can develop a bad one just as easily as a good one. Like I wish, growing up, I wish I'd have known that making a straight, smooth line is uh, aesthetically more pleasing than a, a, a chipped at sort of wobbly line, you know. I would have paid more attention to that growing up and practiced it more often. I have to keep it in my head now a lot of times to make sure that when I can, I go for that nice, straight, smooth, single stroke line as opposed to breaking it into five sections and starting and stopping and starting and stopping. It's 
it's little things like that that add up to uh, a better drawing or um, a, you know a not not so great drawing I like to put in small details like the little pockets on Timo's um, belt just just to make it look like he might be able to open those if he wanted to. I don't know, I think there's just something to I like to noodle. I like nuance. I like little super teeny tiny details and I've been very fortunate that people that buy artwork from me, probably the number one thing I I hear from them about their pieces, you know, there's a lot of detail in this, you know, I like your detail, you know, you pay attention to detail, and, yeah, it's just, it's just kind of a, a pleasure for me to do that, I love, I wish I had more time a lot of times to put in more stuff, but, that can also be a bad thing when you've, you know, got a deadline or something to do, you, you know, you, you can't put in every single, you know, not everything you make can look like you spent days on it. <laughs> I really admire the guys that can pull that off, though, that are able to put on uh, detail, lots of detail in a timely fashion. Yeah, it's just, it's a skill. It's a skill. Uh, it's something I'm, I'm still trying to cultivate. Because um, I'm, I'm not quite where I envision myself being as far as speed and such goes. But that's always the that's always the game, especially when you're trying to be a comic book artist. Is you know you need to be you need to be able to draw, you need to be able to draw well, and you need to be able to draw quickly. Uh, draw well quickly anyway. I really like to draw that little space where the, it's like an ankle, I guess, on a regular person, but where Timo's leg meets his foot. I, I don't know. I like to draw on that part. Nuance, you know, tiny little stuff like that. probably spend I probably spend like 60 or 70 percent of my time when I'm drawing something on nuance on just little details here and there adding flavor to the character um, adding stuff to the background I think it adds a lot make sure you check out my uh, my Instagram if you guys haven't already it's just uh, sketchbooks S K E T C H B O O K S, um, because the the completed Timo was up there. I even I even noodled on it a little bit after this video was made because I just I had to add some more stuff and I didn't want the video to be an hour even though it's close to it. Um, but yeah, you can always see my artwork there. You can see my finished stuff there if you if you ever want to. brush pen is it's fun it's a fun tool to use it's it can frustrate you big time at first but it's so fast once you get it down you know you could carry that one pen in theory you could carry just that one pen and you could make that thing look like you know six different pens probably at least six because it can get the thinness of there i mean there's a single there's a single hair on that thing, on, on my pen that sticks out a little bit further than the others, so 
in in theory if I was some super amazingly steady handed you know guy I could draw with something as fine as a hair um, and when you push it flat or close to flat it's it's f the nib on that thing or the bristles on it the, the brush part is fatter than any of the the regular pins that I carry so you know you've got a whole a whole kit worth of pins in one little brush pen they're cool I mean I definitely say check them out they're cheap um, you know check on like you know, jet pins or something or Amazon I think you can get one for less than I'll say fifteen dollars because I'm pretty sure, I'm I'm positive that I got mine for less than that um, but I think they're considerably less but yeah, that's a that's a really good a really good tool to have it's not super expensive I don't uh, I don't like to spend lots of money on on supplies I guess when I don't have to I'm not against buying good supplies you know but Good supplies won't make you necessarily a better artist or anything, so I don't want anybody watching this thinking like I have to go buy Copic markers, I gotta go buy a Pentel brush pen, or any of the other stuff you might hear me saying. Because um, you don't, you know, you can. I did most of my artwork with for years with a regular old mechanical pencil and like an ink pen, like a ballpoint ink pen, you know, because I didn't know there's other stuff out there didn't have money to buy it even if I did but that's all you really need I put that red exclamation point over Timo's head because in in Metal Gear when when people like spot you and stuff um, the guards I think had exclamation points that would pop up over their heads to show that they had been alerted to something the game was hilarious because when they're when they're confused or when they get ready to forget about you after they saw you 10 seconds ago they get like question marks or something above their head <clears throat> I remember just really liking that that whole aspect that they would they would visually show you what they were thinking with just um, punctuation I thought that was pretty cool so yeah I thought that was kind of a neat little touch to add I think it would be pretty cool if when Timo came out of stealth because he can turn completely invisible but when he pops out of stealth, if that exclamation point would pop up as he came out of his box, that would be hysterical. League of Legends is, is one of those games that I actually still play. I don't play as much as I'd like to. I probably play a couple times a week, if that, but... Um, that's a fun that's a fun game I feel like the people that make that game would I think it's Riot Games I feel like those people would have un, unusually large amounts of fun at their job just inventing characters you know little things like Teemo Um, on that the box there, I, I tried to try to nail a nice, completely straight line, but I don't know if you saw it, but uh, on the the very back right part of that box, it's it's a little wobbly, which is you know it's whatever, but um, that's because I did not I didn't get the motion quite right. I think I had to slow down or something in the middle of the the stroke for the line, and it it showed up just like I told you it would. But I've seen some guys that can really make those pins just do whatever they want, you know. Um, check out Todd Nock if you've never seen any of his work. It's T O D D N A U C K. I think that's how he spells it. Really good, really cool artist. Guy's, you know, amazing artist. He works for a bunch of places. I think the Marvel is off the top of my head, but uh, he can he can do he can work magic with the, those brush pins. Now, I always say save the highlights for last. That's what I always do. Save your whites for the very end so that you can put them where you need them. Um, 
I don't like to try to dance around the white areas. I'd rather just add them at the end, which is what you see me doing there. That's just a, um, a regular color pencil. Because um, once you've got a dark surface down too, the contrast is way better. Seems obvious, but it took me a long time to kind of actively be thinking of that too. You can plan for your white spaces and still color the color underneath them so that they can stand up better. They'll stand off the page a lot better. Well, I think this one's um, just about finished. Uh, again, definitely check out my uh, Instagram page. That's um, Sketchbooks on Instagram. It's S-K-E-T-C-H-B-O-O-K-S if you want to see um, more of my drawings and stuff. I've got more coming up. I'm going to be doing another league sketch, I think, too, soon. So um, check back for that. Please remember to like and subscribe. Uh, definitely let me know if you have any you know, comments or anything as well. I'm going to try to get to doing this more. Uh, maybe even share it with your friends. That would be awesome. I'm trying to get some, some uh, subscribers going on here. It really would help me out. Ah, can't forget to sign. Always sign your artwork, no matter what. Well, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, take care, and I will see you next time.